Synthesizer enthusiasts, being the Freudian lot that we are, love to play with knobs. When discussing the merits of hardware versus software synths, one of the first things to come up is the tactile feedback of actually touching the synths, moving the sliders, turning the knobs, inserting the jacks, softly caressing the supple sides of each. The same can't be said for software synths though. No matter how much we try, they just sort of exist on the screen. They do have some advantages in the sense that they're orders of magnitude less expensive and they're infinitely more expandable. You can have as many of any given component as you want as long as you have the CPU power to power them. What would be really neat would be to marry the tactile nature of hardware with the unlimited opportunities that software provides. Knobs, being the primary way we interact with modulars, are intuitive and easy to use. There are some MIDI controllers that have banks of knobs or sliders, but they're usually there as an extension of a keyboard interface. Software modular synths would benefit from a box that's nothing but knobs. Behringer used to make the venerable BCR2000, a MIDI controller that was a gaggle of knobs and it was extremely flexible. They stopped production on those, unfortunately, instead venturing into the bold and relatively unexplored frontier of making Roland clones. So who's left to pick up the torch of the VCR2000? As it turns out, there are a few options. The one I picked up is a DJ Tech Tools MIDI Fighter Twister. As you might guess, DJ Tech Tools makes technical tools for DJs, and the MIDI Fighter Twister seems to be an unsung hero in the world of software modular. I know I'm not the first one to connect the dots of using this thing for modular synths, but it certainly isn't something I've seen a lot of buzz about. And it's too bad because I really like it. Since picking up this little box, I've had more fun with Reactor than I have in years. I don't really do reviews, so this isn't technically a review of the product, but I picked it up on sale and I really like it. And it might be useful to see what a highly configurable tool can do when you're working with software. So what soft synths benefit from a box O knobs? Reactor blocks are an easy one, especially given the ease with which you can map your real knobs to your fake knobs. Another one we'll look at is Madrona Lab's Alto Synth, a love letter to West Coast Synthesis. Finally, and perhaps most interesting to many people in the synth community, is VCV Rack. Now, as I make this video in April 2019, VCV Rack is approaching version 1. I talked to the main dev on their Discord, and apparently they are adding a MIDI Learn or MIDI Mapping function or module in the next version which is pretty huge. You can have all of your modules for free and for the relatively low cost of $200, get yourself a sweet controller as well. So this is the MIDI Fighter Twister. I got the black version. There's also a white version, uh, if you like that. Uh, it's very straightforward. It's a box on knobs. There's some buttons on the side that we'll talk about. And it communicates via this USB uh, jack at the top. When you plug it on, you get this nice little light show and you get all these nice LED displays. So when you're assigning it, uh, the infinite encoders can work either as uh, normal pots that have uh, LED lights that show you where the position of the knob is, or they can work as uh, pots with a center detent or detente, uh, which is indicated by this purple light here. And then you start from a neutral position and go left and right, which is pretty darn cool for attenuverters. Now, each of these knobs can be assigned to a different thing. Each knob can be pushed for a function, which can be assigned to a different thing. Each knob can be pushed and turned to be assigned to a different thing. So already you're at several different levels of control just with one uh, control face. Then as I mentioned, there are some knobs on the side and pushing the middle of them sort of changes the scene, if you will. And then all of a sudden, instead of being channels one through 16, you're at the next bank of knobs, and then the next bank of knobs, and then the next bank of knobs. So now we're at four times 16, times two plus one click for each of these and you have a whole lot of MIDI function uh, at your fingertips. Now there are two pieces of hardware gear that I am uh, completely enamored with. The first of which is the Buchla Music Easel. I don't have one. I don't know if I'll ever have one. All I really want in life is to have one. So whenever I can, I try to duplicate the functionality of one uh, in whatever tools I'm using. In fact, the first rack that I used to make the album and the one that I have all the time was basically there. It started as a 208 plus plus. And so of course, the first thing I did was create a template here that roughly maps to the slider controllers on the 208, the top half. So the first two rows, red and blue, are the complex oscillator. And then you've got the uh, pulser and the envelope down here. The second piece of gear that I'm completely in love with is the uh, Rob Hordike Blippo box or Blippo box. 
Uh, I don't have one of these either. That's a little bit more attainable, but one just hasn't come up when I've been able to get one, though I am building one uh, in the Euro rack format. But on this page, and what we'll dump, jump into right here, is a reactor ensemble that I built uh, that roughly maps uh, all 16 knobs on the Blipu box. So here we are in Reactor. Uh, we're looking at Reactor Blocks, a software modular package. And what I've done is recreate the components of the Blipu box for the most part using the modules available to me. The centerpiece of the Blipu box is the set of two oscillators, uh, which are usually square waves, I believe. Uh, and two runglers, which I'm not going to go into huge detail here, uh, but they're basically shift registers that uh, are randomly generating values that you can lock in, similar to like a uh, Turing machine module. In this case, I'm using a purpose-built module that was done by the awesome Michael Hetrick in the amazing EuroReact uh, modular library. And if you have Reactor and you don't have EuroReact, go download it now because it's awesome. But he basically recreated the Rungler oscillator section uh, from the Blipu box in Reactor. After that, I added two state variable filters. Uh, these filters in Reactor sound really good, uh, as well as a delay. And once I've added the box, you know, normally you can sit here, you can change the frequency of the oscillators, you can change the shape by clicking and moving things all around. But honestly, since I've started using the MIDI fighter twister, so I've had some knobs to play with here, <clears throat> I've sat here for, I've had hours of fun with just this simple ensemble. And there's nothing here, even if you look at how I have it routed. Uh, right now I have the two filters in series. Sometimes I've set them up in parallel, uh, but it's just this going in here. Um, and I've just had so much fun. So here's a brief glimpse of what I've done with just this ensemble. And then we'll go into another piece of software that works really well with the knobs. But first, a quick example of why the LEDs are so handy on this. My only regret making this video is that the way my camera and lights are set up, I really can't capture how nice uh, these LEDs look. So I'm doing something of a disservice to the box in that way. But anyway, if you look at the reactor ensemble on the right side of the screen, you can roughly get a feel for the way I map these out. Now you can change the color of each LED in a pretty nice piece of utility software that you download uh, to work with the unit. So if you look at the wave shape on the right, I have that controlled here. Um, I changed that to the orangish red to match that. Uh, the same goes for the teal, which operates the uh, frequency. I've got the rungler settings and the FM depth over here. Uh, down in the next row, I've got all of my filter controls. So here I've got the cutoff for the second filter, cutoff for the first filter, and then set at the center, I have the FM depth for each filter, uh, just like they are on the rungler circuit. And then the resonance knobs, which are mapped over to here. And then on the bottom right, I just have an overall level. So when I'm doing these recordings, I'm not looking at the screen or sometimes I'll have the screen off, but once I understand the color coding and you can set this up and customize it for whatever your ensemble is, you can get a feel for, okay, on this screen, these are my wave shapes. Uh, you know, these are my oscillator frequencies and so forth. And then depending on your ensemble, you're a quick click away. And then you have a different layout for something else on the screen if you have more than 16 knobs to adjust. So here we have another synth that uh, just begs to be tweaked with knobs in real time, uh, and that is Alto by Madrona Labs. So again, another system that's roughly based on the top of a music easel, which is the Buchla 208. We've got the complex oscillator, which is two oscillators tied together uh, with frequency modulation as well as uh, timbre controls and wave shaping. We have two envelopes, one traditional ADSR and one sort of looping attack decay envelope. Uh, there's a sequencer. Obviously, this is a lot more complex than the traditional five-step sequencer on the 208. We have the VCA and low-pass gate. 
Uh, there's also a pretty neat delay and waveguide section, as well as a uh, traditional filter, uh, which is not very bookish, but it's it's there, uh, as well as a, a modeled reverb. So here you've got a semi-modular system where you can patch your inputs to your outputs, your gazintas and your gazautas, and this is just so much fun to play with with the knobs. So the way it responds, the way everything works, it's not as easy as Reactor in the sense that with Reactor all you have to do is right click on a control and then move the knob in order to assign it. In this you're going to have to do it through your DAW, uh, which is what I did, but uh, it's a lot of fun. So for this example, as well as the previous one, I actually had the monitor turned off, uh, the computer monitor that is, and I was just looking at the uh, interface with the fighter twister. So that's the MIDI Fighter Twister. It's a great little box. Um, I like mine a lot. It helps bridge the gap between software synths and hardware synths. Software being arguably more powerful and cheaper, uh, but lacking tactile feedback, which you can add on with something like this. Uh, it's especially useful if there's a particular synth, like let's say the Buchla Music Easel, that you'll probably never be able to afford because it's a lot of money and you don't have one. So even though it's perfect and wonderful and inspiring and beautiful, and a wonderful tool, and you can't have one. Well, at least you can get a box with some pretty lights. <laughs>